Do you know when to play safe and when to play bold in back end? The decision is not always easy and there are a lot of factors to consider. And I'll be discussing some of those in this video. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoy this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you like to see in future videos. I'll work on it. If you love Backgammon, you can become a member of this channel, giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. My book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. Again, in this video, I'm discussing the safe versus bold criteria when you're making plays in backgammon. This was first discussed in Paul McGreal's seminal book published in 1976 called Backgammon. He has an entire chapter devoted to safe play and bold play. And in this series of videos, I'm going through some of those. So in this video, I'm actually using the Gammoner uh, X22 Paul McGreal board as a tribute to Paul McGreal. The XG board is made by Rain. He makes beautiful XG boards. There's a link in the description to where you can get them. So the first thing we're gonna discuss is double tiger. This term double tiger was coined by my good friend Michi, Michihito Kageyama in his outstanding book, Opening Concepts. Double tiger refers to hitting twice and leaving two blots in your board. Uh, Michi uh, really likes uh, talking about animals, and it's actually a good way of giving names to certain plays. It makes things much easier to remember. So basically, you're hitting two, two blots, you're hitting twice, you're putting two checkers uh, on the bar for your opponent, but you leave two blots in your board. So we're going to discuss when it's correct to make double tiger play and when it's not. The next thing I'm gonna discuss is key match score. So it's a uh, safe play versus bold play, but it also depends on the score. So we're gonna look at four different scores. The first will be an unlimited game, money game. Uh, the second will be DMP, double match point. The third will be gammon go. And the fourth will be gammon save. And I'll discuss each of those Next, DMP stands for double match point. It's uh, defined as when each player needs one point to win the match. So for example, if you're playing a five point match, the score is four, four, each player needs one. So since there's only one point, the doubling cube is not in play. Additionally, since there's only one point for each player, Gammon wins do not matter and gammon losses do not matter. So that's going to have an effect on whether you make a safe play or a bold play. Gammon go refers to the score where you need two points to win the match and the opponent needs one point and it's the Crawford game. The Crawford rule is used in match play and that states that when one player is within one point of winning the match, the doubling cube may not be used for one game. If the trailer should win that game, uh, he may use the doubling cube at his first opportunity in the next game called the post Crawford game. So in this game, the doubling cube is not in play. We do not play with the Jacoby rule in matches. The Jacoby rule states that gammons and backgammons do not count unless the cube has been turned. However, in a match, they do. So Gammon wins are highly valuable when you're the trailer, when you're at Gammon Go, because a Gammon will win you the match in a single game. So bold play is often indicated when you're at Gammon Go. Okay, Gammon losses do not matter because if the opponent needs one point, a Gammon loss would give the opponent two points, so it doesn't matter. So therefore, anchors are devalued. Usually you make anchors and that decreases the Gammon losses. But since you don't care about that, uh, the anchor itself is devalued. In contrast, gammon save is the opposite score, where you need one point to win the match and the opponent needs two points to win the match, and it's the Crawford game. So again, the doubling cube is not in play. So when you're in the lead, your gammon wins do not matter. So safe play is often indicated. And that's primarily because gammon losses are very costly. <laughs> two points loses the match in a single game so in that case you want to avoid getting gammoned and when you make an anchor that decreases 
the gammon losses. So anchors are more valuable at gammon safe. So that was an overview of the four scores that we will discuss. The money are unlimited, DMP, gammon go, and gammon safe. Okay, so what we're gonna be looking at is uh, one position uh, and we're gonna look at it at different scores. Okay, and we're gonna look at three different roles. So we're gonna look at the same position, but there are gonna be three different roles to play and at four different scores. So overall 12 different positions. So this is an early game position. We're playing black at the bottom, the opponent white at the top, bearing off on the left. The opening roll is a 5-1, played 13-8, and then 24-23 resulting in this position. Now the opponent plays a 4-3, where the correct play is to bring two checkers up, 24-21 and 24-20, resulting in this position. Now we have a roll of 4-3 to play. Okay, so with this 4-3, you can make the double tiger play of hitting twice. You can also make the 20-point anchor, and we're going to look at that. We're going to be looking at it at four different scores for money, DMP, gammon go, and gammon save. After that, we're going to be looking at the exact same position. However, now you have a 3-2 to play. Similarly, you can make the double tiger play, or you can make the anchor. And we're going to look at this at the same four scores, money, DMP, gammon go, and gammon save. Finally, we'll look at the exact same position, but now you have a 2-1 to play, where again, you can make the double tiger play hitting twice or making the anchor. And again, we'll look at it at four different scores. You'll note that you can hit twice with any of these rolls. What's going to happen is the resulting distribution of the checkers will be different depending on the role. Also, you can make an anchor, but depending on the role, uh, you have different anchors. You can make the 20-point anchor, the 21-point anchor, or the 22-point anchor. With the 4-3, of course, the 20-point anchor. With the 3-2, 21, or a, uh, the 2-1, you make the 22-point, uh, where Michi calls it the butterfly anchor. So obviously, the higher the anchor, the better. So We'll have to take all of that into consideration. First, we're going to look at 4-3 and how you would play it for money. So think about how you would play a 4-3 for money. Pause the video if you, not, if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. Okay, so here's the analysis. It turns out that with the 4-3, you should make the safe play of making the 20-point anchor. 24-20, 23-20, resulting in this position. The double tiger play hitting twice is like this, and that results in this position. It turns out to be a blunder. Note that here you're stripping your eight point and you fail to unstack the six point uh, and you're not you're giving up the opportunity of making the 20 point, which is the best anchor on the other side uh, of the opponent's board. Now let's look at the exact same thing at DMP. So think about it, pause the video and we'll look at the analysis. At DMP, the safe play is also indicated, but the bold play is closer. So here's the correct play resulting in this position, making the 20 point anchor and hitting twice is an error, but it's not a blunder. So, so far it's been correct to make the 20 point. Now let's look at it at Gammon Go. So how would you play this at Gammon Go? Pause the video, think about how you would play it, and we'll look at the analysis. It turns out that at Gammon Go, the bold play is indicated, like this, resulting in this position. If you look at the analysis here, with the bold play, you're winning 50.6% of the time. Uh, and you're winning a gammon, this is the gammon, it's 15.7% 15, 15 of the time. Um, you're losing a gammon 13.7% of the time. So the way this works is it displays your single wins, gammon wins, backgammon wins, and then the opponent's single wins, gammon wins, and backgammon wins. Uh, when we Let's go back to DMP for just a moment. So here is the DMP. 
at DMP, these extra gamins don't matter at all. Okay, so you can just ignore those. Uh, and these extra gammas that you win by making the safe play doesn't matter at all. All you're looking at is what wins the most. Uh, in contrast, here, these extra gammons are very valuable. You'll also note that although you win more gammons, you also lose more gammons. However, at the score of gammon go, gammon losses do not matter. So these are very valuable, and these don't matter at all, making this the best play by far. So that's what you want to think about when you're considering the plays. Uh, at gammon go, you want to make a bold play. So now we'll look at the reverse. Now you're at gammon save. So how would you play this at gammon save? Pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis. As you might suspect, the answer is the reverse. The safe play is indicated and hitting twice the double tiger is a blunder. So this is the correct play, making the anchor. That's going to reduce the number of gammons. So you see now these gammon losses are very costly. Okay. Gammon wins are irrelevant, but you don't want to lose all those gammons. Hitting twice loses a lot more gammons resulting in this position. So that is how you look at it for the 4-3 when you can make the 20 point or hit twice. Hitting twice strips the 8 point and fails to uh, unstack the 6 point. Uh, and it fails to make that best possible anchor. It was only right to hit twice uh, when the gammons are highly valuable at gammon go. Next, we'll move on to 3-2. So we'll first look at it for money. Now with the 3-2, when you make the double tiger play, you're going to hit with 8-5 to five and then 6-4. to four. So you're going to be remaining you're going to you're going to still have one remaining spare checker on the eight point additionally you do unstack the heavy six point um, at the same time you can anchor on the other side however the anchor is not quite as valuable as the tw as the 20 point here it's going to be the 21 point so think about it pause the video if you need uh, think about how you play it for money in an unlimited game and we'll look at the analysis in a moment Okay, so here, in contrast to the 4-3, it turns out that hitting twice, the double tiger play, is correct. 8-5 to five and 6-4 to four resulting in this position. Note that you still have a spare here, and you've unstacked the 6-point. Making the anchor is an error, and that results in this position. The primary difference between this and the 4-3 is the location of the anchor that you would make. That's, in fact, the only difference when you're talking about the safe play. Now let's look at the exact same position at DMP, double match point. Pause the video, think about how you would play it, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. Okay, at DMP you also make the bold play. And if you look at the gammons, you'll see you'll see the same thing. These extra gammon wins and extra gammon losses don't matter, but you win more of the time when you make the bold play, 52.1% versus 50.7% when you make the anchor. So it's correct to hit twice, 8564, resulting in this position, making the anchor with 2423, uh, 2421, excuse me, 2321, uh, resulting in this position is an error. Uh, but it's much closer. Now let's look at Gammon Go. So same play, pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. As you would suspect, the bold play is correct because you want to win more gammons. And it's actually a blunder to make uh, the other play, which is not even indicated here. So here, this is the correct play. Hitting twice like this, resulting in this position. The safe play of making the anchor is actually a blunder here. Because here, those gammons are highly valuable. That's what you want. And that results in this position. Now let's look at the final score 
for this role, gammon save. How would you play the three two in this position? Pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in just a moment. Now, as you would suspect, here at Gammon Save, the anchor becomes more valuable. You don't want to lose all those gammons. Uh, you go from 7.1% gammon losses to 13%, and those are highly costly for you, whereas the additional gammons that you gain have no value because you're at Gammon Save. So the correct play is to make the 21 point anchor resulting in this position. And it's a blunder to hit twice resulting in this position. Next, we'll move to the final roll here. Uh, same exact position, but now the roll is 2-1 and we'll look at it also at the same four scores. First, for money. So take a look at this. How would you play the 2-1 in this position? Again, you can hit twice. This time, they would both be off the six point. So it would unstack the six point, leaving the only three checkers on the six point and four checkers on the eight point. Um, or the alternative to, would be to make the 22 point, the butterfly anchor, which is not as good an anchor, but it does make an anchor. For money, it's best to actually uh, hit twice again, like this, resulting in this position. You're going to win more gammons and lose more gammons, but the gammon wins are equally as valuable as the gammon losses are costly for money. So that increase uh, is, is actually good for you because you're going to win more games here. Um, and you're not stripping the eight point and the alternative is to make the 22 point anchor, the butterfly anchor, which is not as valuable at an anchor as the 20 or the 21. So that's another factor you have to take into consideration. Now let's look at it at DMP. How would you make this same play if the score were DMP, double match point? Pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. It turns out at DMP, it's also correct to make the bold play, hitting twice like this, resulting in this position. And making the anchor is a blunder here. And that results in this position. Again, this lower anchor as compared to the 20 or the 21 is not as valuable. So that's part of what you want to think about. You're, you're always hitting on these two points. It's a matter of which checkers you're using to hit and the alternative in terms of which anchor you're able to make. This anchor is not as strong as the other ones, so that makes it worse. Now let's look at it at GAM and GO. Pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in a moment. As you would suspect, the bold play is more correct at Gammon Go, and that's hitting twice like this, resulting in this position. Making the anchor is actually a very big blunder here because you don't need the anchor at this score. Anchors will save gammons. You're not worried about saving gammons. Uh, hitting twice is going to win more gammons, and that's what you really want. So that's what you need to think about. The final score will be Gammon Save. So how would you play a 2-1? Think about it, pause the video if you like, and we'll look at the analysis in just a moment. So it turns out that the bold play is actually slightly better, even at gam and save. Um, however, the safe play is close. So again, hitting twice like this, resulting in this position is the best play, but it's actually close to make the anchor. And the only reason it's that close is because of the score. It's gam and save, resulting in this position. So the considerations you need to make uh, in these choices is which anchor can you make? Of course, the higher anchors are more valuable. So if you can make a higher anchor in terms of a safe play, you want to do that. If the anchor is lower, you would consider the higher uh, the, the bold play more. The second consideration is what is the resulting spare distribution? So we saw sometimes you strip the eight points. Sometimes you have three left on the eight points. Sometimes you have four left on the eight point. Sometimes you don't even unstack the, the six point. With the four three, you leave five checkers. That's very awkward. Sometimes you have four and sometimes you have three. So unstacking points is good and stripping points is bad. 
The third consideration is what the score is. If gammon wins are valuable, such as in gammon go, the bold play is more likely indicated. In contrast, however, if gammon losses are costly, such as a gammon save, the safe play is more likely indicated. So here with the 4-3, you can make the 20 points. So you want to play safe. But if you can only make the 21 point with a 3-2, you can play bold. And this is for money. And the same for the 22 point. After the 4-3, you strip the 8 points. So you want to be cautious of that. That leaves an inflexible structure and it fails to unstack the 6 point. After the 3-2, you have spares on both the 6 and the 8 points. So that's more flexible. You can afford to play more bold. And after the 2-1, you still have spares, so you, which is more flexible, so you can afford to play more bold. So the score considerations are as follows. There's gammon go and gammon save. At gammon go, the gammon wins are highly valuable, so bold play is often indicated. Gammon losses do not matter, so making an anchor is not as important because the anchors are devalued. Anchors prevent you from losing gammons. On the other hand, at gammon save, gammon wins do not matter. So safe play is more often indicated because the bold play will usually lead to more gammon losses. And gammon losses are very costly and anchors are more valuable because anchors save gammons. So in summary, I've created this poem uh, to help you understand. Double tiger or anchor, that is the question. The score is important as there may be exceptions. Always look at the spare distribution in order to find the proper solution. Give thought to the point where you may anchor. Depending on that, you may want to spank her. With 4-3, you make the point that's worth gold. It's foolish to make a play that's too bold. Sometimes a gamut is worth more than gold. In that case, with 4-3, you must be more bold. A butterfly is not great all on its own, so with 2-1, it's simple. Go big or go home. 3-2 is the one that's in the middle. Changing the score makes it a riddle. If ahead in the gammon, you must save. Don't get aggressive. Simply behave. Other than that, it's easy to see. Hit both of the checkers and smile happily. So that was another video discussing safe play and bold play. And here we looked at the double tiger uh, plays hitting twice as well as score based considerations. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Let me know what you think in the comments below, what you'd like to see in future videos. I'll work on it. If you, if you love backgammon, you can become a member of this channel giving you exclusive access to the most popular videos. Again, my book, Backgammon, Backgame Strategies is available. There's a link in the description to where you can get it. And if you're interested in lessons, please contact me via email. My email address is also in the description. I look forward to seeing you in future videos. And until then, keep rolling your dice.